Prince Artists of the Air offer for your approval a quite unusual program. A great deal has been written about Victor Herbert, the composer, but not near enough about Victor Herbert, the man. So we are going to bring you not only the haunting melody, but also some personal reminiscences of America's greatest composer. We believe there is no one better qualified to present these personal reminiscences than the gentleman we are about to introduce to you, whose intimate friendship with the great composer over a period of years enabled him to present these personal glimpses of Victor Herbert's life and work. The well-known actor-producer, Eddie Dowling. Victor Eddie Dowling, at the age of 18, a struggling young vaudeville actor, engaged to play a small part in a new show called She Took a Chance, for which Victor Herbert had written a score. This marked the beginning of a friendship that lasted during the life of the great composer. And now it is my privilege to present Mr. Eddie Dowling. I don't know of anything that so typifies the real spirit of Victor Herbert as that melody. And if ever there was a gypsy, a part of that same romantic adventure, lovable Irish. Born in Ireland, educated in Germany, he roamed the globe, making the whole world his workshop. I'll never forget a little incident that gave me my first insight into his character and his great man. It occurred during the rehearsals of the show to now be announced just meant. He'd been in rehearsal a great many weeks. One afternoon, one of the chorus girls suddenly dropped to the floor in a faint. Mr. Herbert went immediately to her assistance. When she came to, he discovered she was weak from hunger. He'd been rehearsing so long, she'd run out of funds. Hadn't been able to make an advance on her salary. On questioning the rest of us, he found that we were nearly all in the same boat. He stopped the rehearsal and went immediately to the manager and demanded that we all be given enough money to tie the show. Also that the show opened without any further delay. Well, it did. We took a chance opening in Washington the following Tuesday. <laughs> Wasn't good enough to bring him to New York. Back in New York the next week, I got to thinking. With all the confidence of my 18 years, I thought I could have stayed in that show. In fact, I'd already mapped out some new scenes and written a few lyrics. The incident at rehearsal when the girl fainted had shown me how sympathetic and approachable Mr. Herbert was. So one night, taking my courage in both hands, here I go up to his apartment. Good evening, Mr. Herbert. Good evening, lady. How are you, lady? Mr. Herbert, I'll, I hope you'll excuse me coming up like this, but uh, I was wondering what you're going to do about the show. It struck me, I mean, I was thinking. Well, yeah, don't think out here in the hall. Come in, my boy. Let me take your hat. There's a nice, comfortable chair. That's it. Now then, what's that you were saying? Mr. Herbert, I'd like to talk to you about that show. What are they going to do with it? I don't think that anything will be done with it, unless the author can fix it up. And so far, we haven't been able to get out of it. And to tell you the truth, I don't think you could do anything if we did. I think I could do something with it. I'd like to rewrite it. Would you now? Well, what makes you think you can? Oh, I've got some great ideas. You know, I used to sit around at the rehearsals and figure what I'd do if the show were mine. And I'd like to get a chance to show you what I can do. Hmm. Have you ever written anything? Yes, I've written some vaudeville acts, a lot of songs. Got a lyric right here in my pocket now. I think it'll just fit the second act. Well, go ahead and read it. Take life and love as you find them. Nothing is really worthwhile. Those who put troubles behind them meet their cares with a smile. Just for a hasty word spoken, just for a fond word unsaid, love them still you. Love them still you fade like a flower and life Hmm. Yes, I see. I'm afraid I didn't read it very well. I'm so nervous. You read it all right, my boy. And I'm going to put a melody to it. Do you really like it, Mr. Herbert? Gosh, I was afraid you might think it too sentimental. Don't be ashamed, my boy. A bit of sentiment to a song is like rain to the flowers. They're both the better for it. You think so, Mr. Herbert? Think so, I know it. That's why I like to work with youngsters like yourself, Betty. You've still got it, my lad. We old timers on Broadway are absolutist. We think it's smart to laugh at sentiment. 
Don't do it, lad. Don't ever do it. And you'll go far. <laughs> I can't begin to tell you the effect these simple words that Victor Herbert had on me that night so long ago. But I will say from the bottom of my heart that I've carried them with me ever since. Well, a day or two later, the impossible happened, and I was given a contract to do the rewriting. And it wasn't long before we were in rehearsal. The show which had been renamed The Velvet Lady. The next few weeks were so filled with the excitement of writing, revising, conferences, rehearsals, in fact, all the things that go to make show business what it is, the opening night was on me before I had a chance to worry about it. Then when that night of night came, I'm standing that stage, almost certain time. And all of a sudden it strikes me that I, an unknown voice in the country, have written a show with the great Victor Herbert, and my knees start to give away. Just then I see Mr. Herbert coming toward me on his way to the orchestra pit. Listen, the boys in the orchestra are tuning up now. What's the matter, Brady? You're pale as a ghost. Yes, Mr. Herbert. I'm nervous. Are, are all those things right nights like this? But by I know just how you feel. This is your first, and I hope you'll have a good many more. But remember this. As long as you live, you'll never find anything like the thrill of an opening night, especially when you're part of it. Overture! Overture! Uh, Overture! Follow me, Overture. I've got to get down on the pit. Good luck, sir, by... Good luck, Mr. Herbert. Just what a house out there. Did you see who's in the first row? No, who? Dan and Jim Brady. And there's Alan Brady. Oh. And there's Dick Kim Sullivan. There goes the overture. What an ugly miss Thank 
number in the days. In fact, I didn't know much what was happening the rest of the evening until we got down to the finale at the end of the show. Suddenly I came to, and I found myself standing in the wings, listening to the beautiful melody that Victor Herbert had written for my simple little lyrics. glimpses into the life of Victor Herbert, with Mr. Eddie Dowling acting as biographer. Your local station will announce the date of the next episode. This is Lewis Reed announcing this presentation of famous artists of the air in their New York studios.